So, folks, welcome to Nino's Corner.tv. I'm joined with Steve, How to Hunt. Awesome channel. One of the best channels out there. And uh, Steve just <laughs> showed me a very sensitive, top secret, compelling video. Compelling video of a Sasquatch that... Let's call, uh, let's call it an upright being that isn't human. Right. And I, Okay, an upright being that isn't human. I mean, this thing was... What I just watched right now just blew my mind, but there's no way. And a lot of people could be like, ah, oh, come on, put it on. No, no, no. We can't, we can't show this. I know that for a fact, but that was awesome what I just witnessed. Well, you can't duplicate it. No. Folks, get your noble gold. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna knock it out, Steve. Uh, has investing got you stressed? Because I'm stressed. Too complicated. Don't leave your money in the bank losing value. Get it working. Uh, invest in precious metals with noble gold investments. It's simple, real, and always there for you. Real through history's toughest times. And let me tell you, folks, we're going into some really tough times. I just talked to Steve about it off camera. Um, noble gold investments have American experts that make it easy for you. If you're after an IRA and you qualify, you'll even get a free quarter ounce gold standard coin. Keep it simple. You can't go wrong with precious metals. Noble Gold Investments, folks. Go to Noble Gold Investments and get started. All right, Steve. That video you showed me. Uh, I see different. stuff like that kind of like on YouTube, but this I know this is that would be too hot to show, and we have reasons for that. Um, but man, um, that thing moved like that thing could run like a what a, a three eight forty, I and mean, I don't know a hundred. I mean, I don't even know what this guy. That thing moves like a stealth agility, like didn't skip a beat. Like who maybe would just dust Hussein Bolt walking? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's crazy. I can't believe this thing's glide. How fast it was moving up the mountain. Wow, bro. Well, I mean, that's that's up a mountain covering ground like that. You can't so what they said is uh what they're saying is you know that Patterson Gimlin film from back in 67 where it shows that thing ripping on the on the river and they say that's the best video clip ever. Not anymore. This one basically is a handful of notches more credible than that. Yeah, not because a handful. Like you can't duplicate it. No, I know when and, and I'm we're not holding gonna... off we're holding back some details of the type of video what was used to video and where the video is made. We have to hold that back out of respect for the request from the people who supplied me with the video. So, and I've had this for over a year, right? I ain't, I'm not showing this public. I'm not trashing my word, not a chance of help, but I can show friends when off of my phone, when we're in private, right? So there you go. Can we say what was, uh, what it was running from or no, or no? Probably uh, not. Okay. Whatever. Right now, the point, the, the point, I think right now, what we can share easily is the fact that I showed you in confidence in private, a video shared with me that is basically, I don't know, how much more significant than that 1967 video, majorly more significant. I'd Way say, more. Right? And, and then there's no question in my mind. There hasn't been a question in my mind anyway. It's just more confirmation. My, my question, the only question I really have in my mind is, how are they how are they so enormous so elusive i mean how come we don't see more of these things i know they blend into the forest really well but what technologies are they using what sensories do they have i mean they're they're supposedly they're presumptuously supposed to be more primitive than humans right so how do they have these advanced techniques or advanced uh technologies that we don't have to make themselves so elusive disappear maybe go into other dimensions are they are they the nephilim are they what what do you believe these things are man because they obviously they're able to defy all logic and physics well i think I'd, I'd like to make one thing clear first off before we start babbling about this topic i mean i made a pledge a little while back that I would make sure every freaking person got heard for what they saw and didn't ask to see, all right? First off. So I do not share and dedicate my channel to this topic because I'm a, I'm a Bigfoot enthusiast, man. I just live for Bigfoot. You know what I mean? I'm I'm not the guy. I don't give a flying shit. I've seen them. Uh, and I seen one about three weeks ago too. But anyway. Um, three weeks ago. 
Oh, yeah, I'm just not into it. I'm not into it. I want to go and enjoy my life done threatened and terrified. But at the same time, I want to help all the people out there who are being laughed at and discredited, which is in the tens of thousands, right? And as I said earlier, as soon as you get slapped in the face of the sandwich you didn't order, as soon as you get slapped in the face with it, oh, now you really know that we've been misled, misinformed, and lied to from day one. Why? Right? And then you go down all these other rabbit holes. But I'm getting at, before we start talking about it, I think like today, I have more energy and more concern for what's going on to our communities around the globe than I do this topic. But it's a, it is a, it is a fun but it topic. It all goes right? hand in hand because they're they're hiding so many things from us. And if we knew the tree, the true, uh, true nature of everything. Hold on, I got to uh, screw up my screen. Here we go. Well, that's the thing. Like you said, how can they do all this shit and we can't? Well, I'm getting to the point now that. I firmly believe that we can and we could do a bunch more shit than we're taught that we can do today. We're taught that all these skills are fantasy, make-believe, dreams. Oh, really? Are they? Because you you uh, imprinted that into our minds since children about a bunch of other topics that are coming out to be true today. So F you, right? That And that what gets me back to making sure that we hear the voice from every single one of our members of our community and get community back. And that's the only way we're going to get true knowledge. It's the only freaking way. Right. But anyway, I'm, I'm starting to ramble, but I just want to, I just want to make that point that I am not a Bigfoot enthusiast. I'm far from it. I've seen these damn things and I want to know why I seen them and why I didn't know about them. And I want to know why Billy Smith down the road doesn't have a fair crack at taking his children and possibly exposing himself to this fucked up topic. Why he doesn't get that fair chance before he goes and does it by accident? Because I think you got it right the first time. One of the times I talked to you, you said it'll give us, it'll give us our true meaning of freedom. How to live off the grid? How to live outside the matrix? And I also how believe it, it. It'll dispel evolution. It'll completely throw a monkey wrench in that. You know, it'll just. There's so much that this does by knowing that these things exist. Dude, it's like if we could, but could somehow harness and try to figure out to teach people and enhance their sixth sense, like these beings avoid us like nothing. They say they know our demeanor between our ears before we even get out of the truck. And I believe that as being true. Now, just think about this one in society. If we were taught as young children, one of our very first teachings, once we go to this school fucked up system, but let's just say the system was legit and we taught our children how to enhance their sixth sense. Now, if we could have that, there isn't one dark son of a bitch anywhere on the planet that could dupe you with anything. Right? Anybody looking to be in that position of leadership, the mayor, the president, the prime minister, the sheriff, the people would know if they were legit or not just by their in-tune sixth sense. Right? When you go to school as a kid, you know, church, school, these indoctrination camps, they teach you what to think, not how to think. They kind of dumb you down during the process, through the, the whole conditioning process. By the time you're an adult, you're completely numbed and jaded and dumbed down to everything. Right? You're just, you're just a product of the system. You're just a consumer at that point. You don't know what your purpose in life is. People are depressed. They're on medicine. They're on this. They're on that. Uh, you know, so, it's you know, it's, it's definitely a conditioning process. And then they take a bunch of these as kids, you know, so we know, right. I mean, that's the big, that's the big kickoff right there. These things are right. out of the wild. They live free. Um, right. No wonder they don't want to be sought out or looked at or found. Well, you know, they say there's a rumor on the street. I don't know how legitimate it is. I'm pretty sure we're going to find out though, but they say these beings are like, some of them are over a thousand years old. Apparently. I don't know. Anybody can laugh at that. I don't know. Who knows? Let's just say they are. Why don't they say shit? Why don't they help us? If you saw our, okay, our intelligent, our uh, modern, modern communities, worlds have come and gone from the face of the earth numerous times. You can't argue that. That's fact. Okay. What happened to them? Let's just say that is fact. It is fact. Now you're these beings that outclass us. They don't need us. And they're sitting back, thriving, watching. Whether or not they're coming here and going, I don't know. Well, what's going on with the humans today, Ralph? Well, they're they're on their way again. These guys are on their way out again. It shouldn't be too much longer by how, how slow our clock goes. 
why would you help us? <laughs> They've been watching us yeah. come and go for how many generations, right? Why interfere with an enemy that's destroying itself, right? Yeah, they're gonna. They haven't learned yet. Let them gobble themselves up. They're gonna start from scratch again. What's this? The tenth time now? Probably well, we know. Who knows, right? I don't know. But anyway, what well, was well, I what's really fascinating to me is uh, I think on the last program you said that these things are always are often found by the least suspecting place I would imagine, which is nuclear reactors, right? Yeah, and then we had that one nuclear physicist who took his. Uh, it was a Geiger counter, whatever they call it. He was curious and ran about the footprints, and he got a freaking a reading off of the footprints of this damn thing. Now, does that say they're radioactive? No. It says there's a possibility these beings can expose themselves to radiation, and it doesn't do shit to them. I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. Somebody does know, though. And um, what was I going to mention? Getting back to how can they do these things and we can't. Get this one. I just shared this on a video a couple a little bit ago. And you have to fall. I have to drop a little bit of a easily understandable experience I had years ago so that you can relate to what I'm going to drop on you next. Okay. So years ago, I'm, I'm a professional big hunting guide in British Columbia. You meet people from all over the world, celebrities, for commit presidents, for God's sakes. And in the off season, I was a single guy and I would have invites all over the freaking place. And I'm like, hell yeah, I'm coming. The stories I got too. If I ever go hang out, the shit that I've seen and done, you'll my police ID from Mississippi alone will make you go, "What the fuck?" Anyways, <laughs> and that was with Elvis's best friend. Anyway, you know I got stories that are you'd not. Well, you probably got just as many. Anyway, I got some good ones. We'll compare. We'll compare notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so get this one. So these 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 kids, these guys, the hunters, kid, West Virginia. These are a prominent family. And it's funny because you're a hunting guide. Everybody wants to take you out and shoot shit. I'm like, I don't need to shoot shit. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a professional hunting guide. I'm not a killer. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But everybody, hey, man, y'all want to come on and shoot some groundhogs? Oh, yeah, it's, you're not a poacher. You're just, you know, you do what you got to do. I fill the freezer and eat this shit. But because I'm, I'm a hunting yeah. guide, doesn't mean I need to kill shit when I go visit people. But anyways, right. a lot of these people think that you want to come out and they want to show you what they do in the back hills, Okay. So these kids, and these kids were calling other, referring to other guys as rednecks. And I'm like, what? You guys are going to be rednecks? Anyway, get this one. So they throw me in the box of this truck. And it's going to make sense in a minute. They throw me in the box of this truck. Drive in the middle of freaking nowhere. It was creepier than shit. It's pitch black into the woods, down this old deactivated, you know, this old road under oak trees and crap and hardwoods. Like, remember the Blair Witch Project? Yeah, sink yeah. out of timber, right? Just drive through that shit. I'm like, oh my god, who am I with, and what am I doing? And then they had a speaker with a battery attached to, you know, it was a car that lawnmower battery attached to a speaker and a cassette player. And you put the cassette player in, and it would play, it would play, um, alarmed fox pup sounds and scream that into the pitch blackness of this forest. It looked like the Blair Witch Project. It was right. so freaking creepy, right? So we're standing on the in the bed of the truck with rifles over the over the cab of the truck, pitch black, dead silent. And they're pumping this screaming, screaming fox pup sound in the woods. But they also had a spotlight with a red lens on top of the spotlight. Okay. So it's a red spotlight. And sure enough, all of a sudden, here comes these eyeballs. Ping, 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 ping. And here come these freaking foxes out of nowhere. And they're running right up to the truck in the red spotlight, lit up like they're lit up. Didn't have a clue. So what I'm getting at is these foxes can't see the red light spectrum. Nothing there. We had them lit up like broad daylight with these spotlights with a red wow. lens on them. I get where you're going with this. Right? Now get this yeah. one. So take note of that. I'm just using that as a fact that... There is a different light spectrum that a mammal yeah, that exists see. today can't see. Easily proven as that example. And I think, I believe it's canines across the board. I think it's canines that can't see the red light spectrum. Anyway, not the point of my story, but an example so you can follow along. So we've already proven that a warm-blooded mammal can't see shit in the red light spectrum which everybody, every human being is familiar with. Now get this one. This guy on a YouTube channel. Fuck, what was the name of it? Damn it, I can't remember the name of the channel. 
uh, native guy, First Nations guy in Alberta. He's seen these things numerous times. He's got a channel. And he shares his experiences and all of his friends and family's experiences. And he just, just a straight up dude, normal dude. And he shares the shit that's going on in the mountains and forests of Alberta on YouTube. So he's in the forest. I got to get a hold of this guy. I don't know if he's using his phone or a video camera. I don't know. It's one or the other, because I think that everything combined might be the recipe that a lot of people are looking for. Get this one. The guy's in the forest in broad daylight. Just went down like within a couple weeks ago. And he's talking into his camera. So I don't know if it's a GoPro or a phone. Pro I'm guessing it's probably his phone. He's making his video of the day, right? But he's walking through the forest. And he's like, I can hear shit around me. And he's you can see around him. It's, you know, there's no green leaves on the trees yet. He's like, I can hear something around me. I can hear right in front of me. I can't see anything. He's got freaking Polaroid, polarized sunglasses on. I don't think they're full mirror, but they're reflective. Get this one. He's looking at the, the camera is recording his face. The yeah. reflection is caught. Here's this, what is exactly described that what tens of thousands describe as upright, hairy being looking at him right in front of him. And he recorded it through the reflection on his freaking sunglasses. So he couldn't see it with his regular eyes. Wow. What? So there's a regular. And this is on his channel? Yeah. Regular, rural, living, First Nations guy in Alberta. Not a fucking so video. He, he, he lives within a different spectrum of light. That's what it exists in. Or to, well, try to, guess, to hide from us. Obviously, well, who knows if it's intentional to hide from us. But the fact of the matter is, I think this guy just proved that human beings can't see a certain light spectrum. Yeah. Right? But he did it. I mean, really he... hard way to learn. Don't <laughs> 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 really suck. Oh, man, dude. <laughs> oh, shit. It could be worse, right? I'm just saying, man. Is that bizarre? How the hell is a First Nations guy living? It's just crazy just how you have to really unlearn everything, man. It's a piss off. I have no doubt these things exist, especially with the video you just showed me. No doubt, man. That, no, looked, a... that made the Patterson Bigfoot. I think it's a Patterson Bigfoot, right? In the 1960s. It made it look like a... nothing. Like nothing. Like that was just whatever. This was crazy what I just saw. Eats over breakfast. You can't fake it. Oh. You can't fake it. And I won't go into why you can't fake it, but... um. So let me ask you this, man. We were just talking about the Kandahar Giants. Um, you knew of someone that knew one of the, the soldiers that, I guess, survived it, correct? He was there, yeah. I've got a couple contacts. I got one is a very intelligent guy who I hopefully will possibly be hooking up with him and another guy maybe in the near future. This guy who saw the giant firsthand. And I also have another friend who is a hacker and in the hacking community, and she knows a guy who worked on people in Afghanistan that were in that fight. She worked on a guy who lost his leg in the fight with the Kandahar giant. And then he went down with PTSD fiercely. And apparently he's gone back to work. He couldn't, he can't, he can't relate to life here. And he went back to to the forces to go be a medic again. But she claims well, they made him. They probably made him. They're saying, hey man. Yeah. Because I mean, know. some of these people get institutionalized and they get billed as crazy. They get they get put away. You know, you, you survive something like that, your life is hell therefore afterwards. I mean, they're right. just but so, you gotta wonder like the the apparent supposed SEAL team said bin Laden, and then apparently they all died. You know, the bin Laden that they didn't show yeah. us his face, right? Yeah, and then apparently the they all died. Or whatever. Yeah. So uh why did all of these personnel that were directly involved with the Kandahar giant, how come they weren't disappeared? You know what I mean? I mean, I mean, how many survived? I don't know, but but the sound. I mean, there's been a various podcasts have had guys on board. I think then Sean Elliot Ryan Garzulli did did something on that. I I, I gosh, I gotta find that guy's number again. But there's a handful know. of guys out there that were directly involved in this battle, and there's some guys that saw the thing loaded on pallets and taken away by helicopter via Germany, and then apparently this sucker ended up in the states. And this guy who I know who's doing the investigation says, "Now what are they doing with that DNA?" Right. And they're hot. Wasn't this thing like a big red-headed giant? It was red-headed, yeah. right? Isn't that yeah, the big red-headed 
Yeah. They, there was the same type of descriptions of giants in Nevada uh, that lived in a cave that the Indian people in that area were in constant uh, war with, with no those dreaded giants in Nevada. And they found the remains of these things in the caves. I think in the early 1900s, they, they excavated it, removed the bones, but they've just found more relics of these things just recently. So this is in Nevada, some cave in Nevada. Was a shit pile of photos and legitimate corpses, skeletons of giants dug up in the Smithsonian made them disappear, right? Right. So what, what what I'm wondering here is, and we talked a little bit about this before we went live, is are these relatives of the giants? I mean, they must be, right? I mean, these things are huge. They're 10, 12 feet tall. That's a giant to me. Would are they are they the Nef I'm trying to figure out what they are. Are they the Nephilim? Are they part of the fallen? Are they just hybrids that just want no part of any of this? Why are know. they being allowed to exist? They obviously they're obviously very protected. I would imagine they're protected. There's a big mystery. There's a few different angles. There's apparently one of the most dominant um storylines that all everything the arrows seem to be pointing to is the Nephilim theory story whatever you want to call it and then you've got the uh the original they're hybrids they've been hybridized crossed with animals intentionally hybridized not just with whatever the male dna is of these things but then then like we said before the unfortunate shit-eating thing is another one is these dog-headed dogman things which i refuse to even as soon as out of for how long i used to hear people talk about the shit i'm like oh god here we go again right yeah werewolf but and I, it was yeah, but then I had to pull my head out of my ass after about my 10,000th eyewitness email coming in. And now we got the DNA from one of these beings. Dude, there's, then, there's trail cameras that pick these things up sometimes. Yeah. That snap a shot on them, and you can see it. It's obviously, it looks like a, a man-wolf type of creature. I'm not... People could dismiss this all they want. I, I would have five, ten years ago as well, but no. There's something going on. I think something's going on in a lab somewhere, and they're genetically modifying these things with humans, with dogs. That's what I think is going on with well, the dog. I think, I think it's a given. It's a given that the I think maybe the Sasquatch has been here. Okay, I, I, I would say, okay, thousands of years, whatever. Millions of years, whatever it is. But the dog man, I think, is a genet genetically altered being, in my opinion. I think there's just no way, dude. Come on, yeah. a werewolf. It's like everything. I can't get myself to wrap my can't wrap my mind around this, dude. Yeah, well, every, everything's genetically altered. That that yeah. the dog yeah. thing that's in the Egyptian, all Egyptian. You're history. right. Can you see this? You're right. Hey, can you see this right now? Can you make that out? What that is? That's a lens of a. a sunglass yes, it's a huge shadow in the background. You know, look at this. That zoomed in on the shadow. Holy cow! That's the reflection off his glasses. Yeah. Yeah, I think it has a big nose. Big old flat box. Sunglasses. That's a still from a live video the guy made walking through the forest. Yeah, First Nations guy in rural Alberta is walking through the forest and somehow came up with how to fake that. Said nobody ever. <laughs> right? Can you show the picture where it shows the, the, the being up close? Again, the, in the glasses? Yeah, so he uh, got Swan Lake Bigfoot, I think. Is the name of his channel, I think. Yeah, so all of a sudden, this face. He sees it later after the video's made, reflecting off of his sunglasses right in front of him, but he couldn't see shit in front of himself. And he was panning around with his camera. Yeah, so this thing's in an alternate, or like an alternate dimension or, or light frequency, I guess. Because it's obviously oh. in our dimension. So what is it? Dude, it makes me think about the. Uh, if you can believe this, you got to believe the reptilians. You got to believe all of it now, because if they're able to coexist with us in some kind of other alternate frequency, whatever this is, mm. no wonder. I mean, I just had on. Uh, I just had on. Was it Jason Brashear talking about They Live? Remember that movie back in the day, They Live, where the guy puts on the glasses, Roddy Rod Piper, eighties movie, early eighties where he sees the true reality of things with these sunglasses. And oh, he that puts sounds familiar, yeah. And he can see, like, the reptilians, and he can see, like, all the subliminal really? messaging and 
TV and in signs it says buy, consume. You know, just and just you can see everything. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's an old, old ass movie, but I mean, really, well, if we lifted the veil from what what this true reality is, look at the, I mean, look at that. Look what you just showed on his sunglasses. That right there shows <laughs> proves it. That's from video, dude. That's from a video in the forest of a native guy walking around talking to a camera. And then later on, he's editing. And he's like, what the hell is that shadow in my sunglasses? Takes a still, zooms in. What the fuck? So did <laughs> right? he feel that thing around him, though, right? He felt Oh, it. yeah. He could hear things right in front of him. He could hear he could hear things all around him and right in front of him. He couldn't see shit. I've had hunters email me sitting 14 feet up in a tree stand, right? Something breathed on the back of his neck and hawked a loogie on the back of his neck. Poof. Spun around. Nobody's there. I wonder if there's some kind of law uh, that they're not allowed to touch us or, well, or, or hurt us. Apparently, 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 the word on the street with a lot of people have researched the asses of, which obviously I don't. I just listen to everybody. I don't got time to go researching and digging into these things. Ultimately, listen, it's a big chunk of life, right? But they say they're not allowed to interfere with us, period. You know, they can watch us. They call, they call them the watchers. They just watch us. They watch us. They say that they do not have any respect for us, period. Consider us an absolute waste of oxygen because of how stupid we are. And we are not even close to where they are in existence today. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? We're just bumbling through this life, to poisoning the shit out of each other through the shit we feed our, ourselves on and on and on. But they say... They got absolutely no respect for us. Don't they? Don't give a flying shit. What I guess we do they look at us. They look at. But you said, "Hold on, though." But that would make sense because we're falling. Mm. We're falling. But they. I remember you telling me a story. Maybe you'll share with my audience that they do. And I can't remember the the details of the story. But you said something about the respect they have for Jesus Christ. Yeah, they when. We've had, I don't know how many, but then again, okay, so we had a shit pile of people who have researched this topic from one to the other. They've ran into these beings numerous times. These are very God-fearing, biblical, Bible-reading people, and they rebuke them in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord and tell them, I command you to leave me alone now or leave my property now. Quit looking in our bedroom window at our kids now, and it works. It's worked like more times than it hasn't. And then I got other guys who tried and it didn't do shit <laughs> so they probably didn't believe i don't know i haven't a clue but there's no i've, heard that, I've heard that alien abduction uh, alien abductions are i've had a guest on talking about this that they stop the minute someone rebukes them in the name of jesus christ yeah it's not a uh it's it's a pattern and it's just like i had a, I had a an investigator from california los angeles investigator email me and he says flat out hey dude as soon as we get three of the same similar testimonies, it's a pattern, and we dive all over it. We only need three. He goes, you've got 30,000. Yeah. Right? I mean, there's no... I mean, this isn't a, a segment to uh, throw back and forth whether or not the shit's going down. It is going down. And you can have, you can put your head in the sand. That's fine. Put your head in the sand. It's not going to change it. If you if you react by sh by laughing or lashing out, just because you can't handle the facts doesn't mean it ain't happening. You just can't handle it, right? And the majority of humans, let's face it, man, like, all right, we both got pretty large followings, right? And I'll put some, I'll put a post on, say, Instagram, something to do with the big fish we caught or under, underwater filming, whatever we're doing, and it'll get like, I don't know, 1,000, 2,500 likes, right? And then like today, I put on, what should have the most attention in the world today is the French president pushing for the nuclear exchange with Russia. Yeah, right. That should be on everybody's plate in your face and everybody should chase that guy down, put him in a cage. And I put that post up and you got like 300, All 300, 300 people paid attention to it. But I wonder if that's because they're throttling it back or I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know, man. It's like I, I kind of lately I've been a little frustrated only because of the if you follow what's going on for real in the world today, listen to the intelligent people that we listen to. If you're not pissed off and frustrated right now, you're basically just a freaking window licker as far as I'm concerned today. Right? Awesome. And I use the example, I go, listen, we're in a population right now where apparently we have this microscopic virus airborne. So 
you know, where our, our number one food sources are. Well, we still let people in where our food sources are for our city, but we put stickers on the aisles to make sure everybody walked in the same direction. Right. If that doesn't make you look, I'm trying to bite my lip right now. How I really, I, I, I know you're talking. I know it's, it's disgusting. It's like really? But the amount and of then, people. And then, like, you, then, then you look at all these people that are following suit and following the sheep off the cliff. And you're like, dude, I am not part of this. I'm yeah, not you, part of this human race. I cannot be part. I'm not part of this. This can't be. This has got to be a movie. <laughs> right. Do you it's think a bad movie? one. Dude, I, I, can't often think my, I often think to myself, you know, I, I, I flatline twice, right? And I often wonder, did I really die? And am I back in an alternate timeline and I'm living through this fucking hell? You've, like, you've like I wonder. Man. I was like, my life was so good. I was 36 and 0. I was on my way to the heavyweight championship of the world. I was fucking unstoppable. And then after those incidences, everything changed. And I'm like, am I in an alternate reality, dude? Did I really die? And I got sent. And this is, I, I really think it's shit like this. Tell me that that's not possible. I know that's possible. Like, maybe well, my parents are mourning my death in another reality. I don't know. Like, this uh, is crazy. I think about this. Uh, you know what? Coincidentally, <clears throat> by accident, I had, I came across, do you sleep all, do you sleep all night? What's that? Do you sleep all night? Uh, not really. No. Yeah, me neither. So I'll put on, uh, I put the earplugs in so if I don't wake up Sarah and then I'll hit something, right? And I'll listen to something. Usually I listen to something that'll enhance my mind. And then one day, just recently, I came across an NDE video, near-death experience. And I have friends who have had near-death experiences. And I started listening, and then it caught my attention. So I started, then I listened to another one. And I listened to another one. And holy shit, the similarities are in your face. But getting back to what your question was, a lot of these people were, they all said that you're not judged. They said you're not judged. I said, you, your whole life is ran fast pace in front of you. From the time you're a kid, you're showing all the fun things you did. You're showing the good things you did, the good things you did to help people and how good it felt. And then you're showing the shitty things you did that made people feel bad. And you're showing the pain that those people experienced. Oh. You're showing the pain. And then, uh, and for some reason, some people are shown and some people are stopped and they're sent back here for a reason. Now, obviously, what you're doing right now, maybe, possibly, you were supposed to have a little shift in direction at that time. You never know. I mean, right now, you got to admit, if you look at it, if you look at it in a, in a from a different angle, a possible different angle, what's 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 your time spent? What's better for your time being spent punching people in the face, making money, or helping your community? Helping my community, hundred percent, thousand percent. So maybe and my if consciousness has expanded so much, like it's 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 grown so much more in this field, this new arena, than it was in boxing. Boxing was like I had a, it was a golf ball and a shoebox consciousness. Now I'm a golf ball in a, in acres and acres and in, in just a golf course. Right? It's just different. It's like a whole nother world. And I think I'm living to my my fullest potential doing this. Yeah, like I, you got to. But it still hurt like a motherfucker. I'm not gonna lie to you. It was like a nuclear bomb went off in my life, and I was just like, for ten years, I had to pick up the pieces and reinvent myself. But mm. I would have never guessed it would have gone this direction. Never. Same, dude. Jesus. I mean, uh, I don't know how many times I wake up and like, huh? Like I've got the most watched channel in the world when it comes to this hey, one dude. topic. I love you. I love the you. world. I know, yeah. but it's like that wasn't my goal. How did I end up? How did, you know? It's just like gotta ask yourself. How did? Because you're real, bro. You're real. I know. How you're do, like, I know? But you're how just did, a fucking good dude, man. Yeah, but how did we and so many others end up in these positions we are in? Because we can't stop ourselves. You can't stop yourself, right? I can't. You could easily walk away and go make some fucking money and, and mind your own business and just watch the shit show go down. But I, I can't do it. I don't know why, but I just can't do it. So like I showed. I think I like, think Jason Bashir is a guy that I just had on talking about this simulation theory. I think he said it best. He said you know, we're teachers and now is the time to teach. And a lot of us are teachers, whether we like it or not, we're helping people navigate through this horror show, you know, teachers, and I think whether teachers you want to admit it or not. Teachers. You know, slash way of it's that? almost like a teachers, teachers, protectors, fighters, because all the similar people we listen to, they've all got fighting backgrounds and 
protect our backgrounds, right? Yeah. That's that's possibly something to maybe take note of. I don't know, because I am seeing a bit of a pattern with the different characters that I follow and I listen to, and everybody seems to be on the same. We all seem to be in the same journey, going the same direction, maybe from different angles, but we all seem to be doing the similar thing and we didn't ask for it. So what the fuck's up, <laughs> you know? You know, like before we went live, we were talking about certain events that could happen or are supposed to be, you know, what I feel yeah. is going to happen in the next six, five to six months. And I believe it to be probable. And I, and I think, I think you do too. Um, I think we're getting ready for a big shit show, man. I mean, this is going to be one of the books. Well, another thing too is, you know, for a while now, everybody's saying it's something, something's coming, something's coming, something's coming. coming. But, you know, jump out of that bubble and look in the bubble again. Something's been coming and has been here in our face and hitting our plate almost weekly for what? A couple years now? Three? Yeah. It's here. It's happening. It's a good four years. I mean, Death by a thousand razor slashes, right? That's what's going on right, right now. And they're right. taking right. their infrastructure before I, I don't want to get into it too much in YouTube, but you're seeing the infrastructure being taken out, open borders, bridges collapsing, and then the big one hits, folks. Yeah. So just think about that with your imagination. All, all of this is engineered. You don't think another thing I was going to bring up too was um I think maybe possibly one of our problems is is we're being absolutely bombarded, swamped with too much. And here's an example. You don't know what to believe. Well, no, not that, but I mean what to focus on. Because, okay, here's an example. That movie, uh, The Sound of Freedom, right? Remember The Sound of Freedom? You had the you had the actor, you had your friends on on your podcast. I watch it. I pro the shit out of it. We had everybody talking about it. Oh. On to the next topic. Because we're having... We're having about 50 to 100 freaking battles dumped on our plate. What? Every minute. By the week. Every minute. Not... Now. Think, about, think about every time you swipe with your finger. Just one of those swipes back in the day, let's say 15, 20 years ago, would be major news for months. And it's going to get attention. That. And it's going to get attention until it's dealt with. We're not dealing with shit. You know what I mean? Like, we're not all banding together and taking... One of these battles, okay, we got the sound of freedom hits our plate. We got these characters that are taking all these children. All right, let's fucking fix this and erase this right now as a community. Oh, boom. Yeah. Well, you know, five days later, we just got another unrelated but big thing dumped on our plate. It's because boom. consciousness is, is, there's so many avenues now for creation and consciousness. I really feel like novelty now is picking up so fast that we don't even know where to look. It's like going on a tennis court and having a, a tennis ball machine to go, don't. And then all of a sudden, bringing out 50 of these tennis ball machines is just, duh, 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 duh. you don't even know what ball to hit. You're just like overwhelmed, right? Isn't that what it is? I mean, but you're, still, just, standing, but you're still standing there in front of the tennis ball machine. Trying to hit whatever ball you can, I guess. I'm still standing there, though. I'm still in the game. Yeah. yeah. That's what it is. Know. Like, what do you pay attention to now? It's like, there's so many avenues for our consciousness to go through. And it's just, and then it's like, and it almost feels like, we do. We are in the end, man. This is whatever's coming. That's it. whatever's coming. We are like in the bottleneck right now. I feel like we are in the bottleneck of it, and like time and space is collapsing on itself, and oh, we're going through this warp speed channel of whatever this is. The quickening. Yeah. Well, you know, I I do like to pull a positive out. Like I, I one of my closer friends, he goes, "Dude, you're the most positive guy I've ever met in my life." Like there's, I like to try to come up with, or maybe look at it from, I look at everything from different angles all the time. Now, you know, here's an, here's an example. All right. So we got our food sources getting pummeled, right? There's a war on our food source globally. There's no question about it. If you can't see that, well, you're probably got your, your tongue stuck to a window somewhere. <laughs> so let's just say, I mean, they're making food in the store more and more unobtainable by the freaking day i showed you i showed you what we're doing with our hungry children here i'm feeding them we're me and sarah we're going to be over we'll be over 80 mouths fed with quality food two weeks solid quality food per household after tomorrow we're going to be over 80, 80 people just two of us anyways but what i'm getting at is we just had a new tax imposed by our wretched criminal in the leadership position now I can't even imagine the unobtainable food products. Now here's maybe the possible possibility 
of the positive side to this. Okay. What's going to happen, especially where we live. I can't, I can't speak for people who live in various different areas in North America, but where I live, if our food source, our major supply food source got chopped, but I'm looking at it from a different angle, it would actually benefit society. We become more healthier. Think about it. We'd be, we would be more healthy. We got right here. We've got fish, seafood. We've got, yeah, you've got to be a guy like you that hunts and fishes and does stuff like this. These are too many people. Millions of people are just domesticated and they oh, don't know the first thing about hunting and going out and get their own food. They're yeah, going to be feeding but, these people bugs. Yeah. But I think what the, the minor point I'm trying to maybe pull out of a hat from a different angle to view in is having our, our our major food sources chopped off right now would might be a good thing in the long run not i'm not talking about fighting in the streets and cannibalism and going gangster trying to raid somebody's fridge <laughs> no but up on the other positive i'm looking at the positive i'm just saying because here's another example there was a native community i think it was in british columbia and everybody in this community was basically uh stricken with diabetes unhealthy and they agreed to some native first nation counselors and another person they did an experiment and they made the community go back to eating what's available around them geographically they eliminated diabetes in the freaking community wow wow that's huge right so anyway um i'm just saying i'm just trying to pull a positive out of all the shitty negatives going on right now i'm like we we're talking to sarah the other day and i'm like well you know what in all reality well, I, I think I think we'll make it through. I think it's going to be really tough, but we are going to make it through. I think the Canada and America that we knew once before is gone forever. I think we're going into a new phase, a new, a whole new chapter here. Uh, you can't a whole get new book. <laughs> you can't get, it can't get too much worse. No. Uh, I heard we're at about a three right now. We're going to hit a seven or eight is what I've heard. I don't know. Maybe. I don't ever bring it. I'm ready. But you're gonna be good, dude. I mean, all you do is you, you I mean, you live off the land. My 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 worry is can you imagine the people that might flood into your area? You know, yeah. like, coming up there. But maybe not. You're in Canada, man. So fuck. You know what? We actually we we talk about all possible. You know, it's gonna be obviously gonna be a handful of people, the people that are heading the sand that are gonna listen to us right now going, listen to these two conspiracy idiots. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Have yeah. a look at other countries right now. Hey, how, yeah. how you doing, Haiti? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? Don't think for a second all the shit in the world can't happen to you. That's the biggest mistake. You oh, it's happening happen. now. I don't see anybody who's who's debating that. They all agree something's wrong. I mean, they're all coming here. Yeah. But I, I mean, we were even talking just yesterday after I told you what she witnessed at the airport, right? Yeah. And, um, and I was saying to her, I go, I go, okay, let's just picture we're in a goofy movie. Let's just picture this is a goofy movie. All right, shit's going down. Uh-oh, there's hordes of people from somewhere else coming down our streets, basically going door to door, muscling, looking for food, provisions, or whatever. How would we make out? I'm just, we're just joking about my immediate area right here. How, I mean, you, you've been to Vancouver. I can be in Vancouver yeah. in less than two hours. We're not like in the middle of freaking nowhere. I could be in Seattle in my boat in probably an hour from right over here. So, but I'm just saying, I go, let's see. Well, we live at a dead end rural road. All my neighbors are basically people that would probably put somebody under a stump if you asked them to. Yep. Yeah. There's probably enough guns just on my street to have a mini war for about six months. So I'm pretty sure it would be okay. <laughs> it I, uh, I, I think you'd be, yeah, I think you're good. I mean, where I'm at, I'm right on the border. I'm like ground zero here next to Mexico. So I don't know how I would fare, but. But what's going on in Mexico? Not fight, go down. I won't go down without a fight. Well, what's going on in Mexico? How, how are the people living? Is there anything drastically changing for them? No, I mean, I know people and obviously see that flood is right. That's what I know that live there. And they tell me like, man, they, they do not like these people going there. They don't like it. It's causing a lot of crime. It's spiked violent crime. They're just hanging out in Juarez. They're causing problems. Um, well, how about those? How about those two young guys that did the freaking documentary and they did the whole track? You watch that one. Which one is this? The two young guys. They video documented doing the trek from Central America to the. Oh, States. I didn't see that. You didn't? No. Send it to me. I'll watch it. Well, it's. You... I mean, dude, I mean, I'm around this shit. I mean, I'm basically here on the border. I know. 
I just, but I've never seen that. But I mean, I can imagine how bad it is. What they showed the UN and China. Oh, don't say, don't say that either. Don't say that on here. All right. I got to catch you on that one. All right. So they I said. Mean, I think my audience knows. Those guys with the blue helmets that bullets can go through? Yeah. <laughs> they had a. Uh, they have roadmaps of how to hike to the U.S. through the jungles. It's on video. These guys did the trek. Like, this isn't just some, this isn't just yeah. a big thing to help people out at all. And anyway, look at us. Look at us go. It doesn't take long, right? We're supposed to be talking uh, about big. No, I'm with you on it, though. But how do you not talk about what's oh, going on? Oh, you should hear our discussions off camera. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But anyway, but that's, uh, yeah, I was looking forward to sharing that video. Dude, yeah. I got to tell you, man, I'm I'm sold on it. It's incredible. I hope that someday people do get to see it, but it's not up to me. Not up to me. But I got to tell you, man, thank you for letting me see that. That was awesome. Awesome stuff, dude. That was so cool. Yeah. Not a changer for sure if you're ever on the, on the fence of that topic. But getting back to the other Am I going to be able to – I mean, before uh, shit hits a van, I got to get up and see you, or we got to meet somewhere and go hunting and go fishing, man. I got to do that well, once. You probably bring your family up and come fishing. But anyway, yeah, uh, yeah, get some salmon halibut, have some fun. And it's very safe here. But anyway, I was going to say, well, I'm going down there. I think I'm flying. Well, I won't say when I'm flying, but it's real quick. And I'm not, I always, I just wing it. I can't help myself. Like Sarah's like, when are you coming back? I don't know. <laughs> I've never, I've <laughs> never made me. plans in my life. Like I've always gone somewhere at two to three, three weeks or even a month or two months of time. I don't know. I'll show up when I show up. Right. Poor thing. But anyway. So I'm coming down. I'm going to be, I might be coming near you for sure. Okay. We'll see. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know as I'm going. Right. But everything cool. I'm doing right now is geared up to learning and meeting up with people who know some shit. So okay. we'll be sharing along my ride for sure. And then if we hook up, I'll, I'll be able to share with you what I can't share yet here, which should be substantial. And I also got a bunch of other shit that I'm putting together to share from some scientists who state some facts about this topic that'll make your freaking hair stand on end too oh. anyways, let's get to say, a side note though how 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 is following all the shit show affecting you you know i'll be honest man i lived a life of adrenaline and stimulation and being having a knife look i i've, I've already experienced the worst encounter man. a knife went through my throat I don't know really what beats it, but a, a knife to the throat is very intimate. Uh, and it, it's very, uh, and I mean, yeah. I was almost gone. So I experienced that. So I'm on bonus time anyway. And the way I see it is <laughs> I let me get this far. So why can't they make it further? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I, I really am. That's my mindset. It's like, I've gotten this far. I'm on bonus time. I'm thankful. I'm grateful. Otherwise, I should have been dead now for another for uh, 13 years or whatever. I mean, I should be gone. I so I'm it. still here. And well, you're still laughing, though, right? You're still laughing lots of shit. Dude, yeah. Like, I'm still enjoying life, and I, I'm doing something completely different than boxing. You know, man, it's like my dad. I talked to my dad. My dad's in the hospital right now. With, you know, he's having seizures or whatever. And and I go, Dad, man, you got to be all right. We got to get through this. He looked at me, and he starts laughing. And I was like, What? He's like, I'm 89. <laughs> like he's, he's I don't know, man. It's just like, you know, it is what well, it this is. Lifetime, one thing for certain, I well, I am I am 110% convinced this isn't the end. There's no freaking way this is it. Not a chance to know. It's not. But on that load of your dad, here, let me share this funny one with you. I met up with this, met up with a guy to this doctor, Dr. Ken Tuttle. And he's from Oregon. He used to be one of these surgeons, the only one who could put together a whole bunch of big medical summit on his ranch. He used to be on CNN and shit. Really good guy. Yeah. So get this one. His knees didn't bend anymore. And he had, he had these little brown stains in the front teeth from smoking tobacco. Very intelligent freaking surgeon, right? And he he called it, he called himself the Tuttle Shuttle. The Tuttle, the Tut Shuffle, because he couldn't really walk anymore. And he yeah. booked a freaking mountain sheep hunt. And finally, I'm like, I had to get to this. I had to walk him down the shuffle him down the trail and find this big, tall stump so I can get him on top of his horse, right? Yeah. Real good guy. But I'm I'm one-on-one -on -one with these guys all day, every day for two weeks. And finally, I go, dude, you booked a sheep hunt? 
Seriously? He goes, well, I don't know, man. I was at the I was at the hunting show banquet and I was trying to bid up the hunts. And next thing you know, they said I won. I got the hunt. I was just trying to get the price. Oh, prices he won up. it. <laughs> yeah, he, he was he was bidding up the auctions to try to get the price up, and he got the auction of sheep and a moose. Oh my hunt. gosh. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, holy shit, dude. All right, well, I think I got this one hill I could try to get it. I mean, I got pictures of me. Super, this guy's just a real awesome human being with the most fucked up stories I've ever heard in my life. I'll tell you later. <laughs> a lot of them are absolutely hilarious. I mean, you know what? I might even tell that story before we get off because you'll love it. But anyway, getting back to your dad. So I finally get him on top of this mountain. In the, and I say that with affection. Love yeah. He's got a fishing vest on, right? Pocket, he had rolling papers, pouch of pipe tobacco, a pipe, uh, a 25 pack of king size cigarettes. And when you stop, like I can't stand background sound. I'm calling moose or I'm glass for sheep. And I finally sit down on this pristine mountain peak in the Rocky Mountains. It's absolutely beautiful. And I go to concentrating. And then all of a sudden I just hear this. <laughs> And I'm like, fuck, what are you doing? I'm just gonna have a smoke. You're a surgeon, you idiot. <laughs> right? He goes, ah, look at you, you don't get it. I'm 69. I'm ready to go. If you can make it to 65, you can smoke that shit out of this shit. You're not gonna die. I almost I, I I agree with him, dude. <laughs> but he said he goes, look at you, you're all you're all fit and shit. If you die tomorrow, you're gonna be pissed off. I die tomorrow. I'm good. I'm ready. I'm good to go. <laughs> and he goes, to He's got him. a point. Right? So, but here, I got to share. You're going to love this story because we, we've been talking about doom and gloom for a while. You're going to fucking lap your head off. Listen to this. So, we have another guy in camp. So, we typically have two guys in camp. Sometimes they're friends. Sometimes they're not from anywhere around the globe. And they're on a two-week hunt. Could be for elk, mountain sheep, mountain goat, whatever. Right? So, my hunter is obviously Dr. Is Ken Tut? We call him Tut. My hunter's Tut. And the other hunter was a guy, he, I think he's in his late 30s from, oh no. Shit, my brain's farting. Over there next to the Ukraine somewhere. What the hell was it? Hungarian. He's from Hungary. Okay? Follow me. He doesn't know a stitch of English. Nothing. Nothing. And he's got a, a translation book from English to Hungarian. Okay? I'm clowning nonstop. As the sun comes up, somebody's getting ribbed, or we're, we're saying stupid shit to make ourselves laugh all day, as normal, right? So there's myself, another guide, two hunters, a female cook, and a wrangler. So our wranglers are teenage. Right, right. right. And, I'm <laughs> razz, and I'm razzing him. I nicknamed him Julie. And I go, hey, what's your name? Uh, Garrett. Not anymore, it's not. Huh? You're not <laughs> Julie. You're Julie. You can't bitch. Right, <laughs> like just shit like that in resume. Yeah. So, and we called him Julie Els. He's a great kid. He worked for me up in Whistler after we got up. Anyway, so we're at the dinner table, and this is back when everybody's joking. Oh yeah, Fuck, remember, remember those that. days, right? Now it's like the norm. <laughs> yeah, but then you know you're at home, and one of your buddies would go, "Hey man, no shit, man. Heard about this for sure." And then I get pissed off. I go, "Would you shut the fuck? People aren't putting live hamsters up their ass. Shut up." You know, it's almost making me yeah. annoyed that friends I have respect for are repeating this stupid tale, and it's making me angry. Now, and I had a lot of surgeons, some from D.C., from all over the Louisiana, and surgeons, I loved them. I love getting doctors, because they have the most fucked up human being stories you could ever make think up. Like, one day we'll sit down, I'll tell you some other ones that are mind freaking boggling straight 100% from the doctor. Anyway, so I'm sitting right here. You're the guy from Hungary right across from me, okay? Tuts on my left. The cook's standing up, cooking a shit. The other guy just over here. Wrangler's right there. And the guy from Hungary doesn't know shit. He's just sitting there like a mannequin. And we're all cracking funny stories. And I go, Tut, listen to me. Listen, I go, Tut, tell me, tell me this isn't true. Tell me. I'm sick and tired of this shit. People keep, oh, yeah, guys are putting gerbils. In. Tell me it's not true. And then he goes... I've already described the character. The doctor goes, and everybody's laughing their freaking head off at the table while I said this, and the guy from Hungary is just sitting there. For all he knows, we're joking about him, right? And then Tut goes, well, I hate to be the one to tell you, Steve, but it's true. <laughs> the surgeon, I'm like, 
no, it's not. And, I'm, and now I'm screaming, no, it's not, you lying bastard. Stop it. Don't say that. Oh, it's true. And they put a lot more weirder shit, right? So now everybody's scream laughing at the table, right? Yeah. And I felt so bad for the guy from Hungary because he can't, we can't chuck him the ball. He's got nobody to throw the ball with, right? And look at all the poor bastards. So I got it from the table. I went into, oh, there's two cabins. We're in the middle of freaking nowhere. We're like, you can stand on a mountaintop and do 360. We're the only human beings in sight. Bush plane drop off, two days for us to ride the horses in just to get these cabins. So now I go back into the hunter cabin, which is my cabin with the hunters because the cook's in her cabin. And we only go there to eat. And I get the Hungarian translation book out. And I'm adamant. I'm going to tell this guy this, this story. What we're laughing at. Okay. <laughs> so Garrett, come, I still got this in video somewhere. Because Garrett comes in. He's got the video. What are you doing, Steve? And I go. And it took me forever. Like it took me over an hour and a half of going through the Hungarian translation book. Trying to come up with. I thought that I wrote down funny doctor tell story of man putting gerbil but i couldn't find the word for gerbil in hungarian but i found guinea pig so i use guinea pig right and the garrick said what are you doing steve and i go well i'm trying to write the story to the guy from hungary so he knows we're laughing at about the twisted guy who puts gerbil but i had to replace gerbil with guinea pig goes, oh we laugh if the poor guy from hungary doesn't come in the cabin right when i thought i completed my honest helpful thing i go hey check it out here 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 and, and he, he goes like he goes like this guy the book is going <laughs> yeah starts losing his shit on me and runs out of the cabin and leaves me sitting there by myself i'm like he thought oh, maybe shit. who knows what still today i don't know what i could have told him that i wanted to jam a guinea pig <laughs> wait what happened dude so you're in the middle of nowhere yeah and he had to stay there till the end of the hunt and he wouldn't look at me he wouldn't sit near me he wouldn't have nothing to do with me for the next handful of days <laughs> like I, who knows who knows what his version of the story is today he could still be in hungry today saying yeah that guy on on youtube that's him <laughs> That's the guy I told you guys about. He was with the guinea pig. I mean, he called his penis a guinea pig. I don't know, but that's the guy. <laughs> Holy shit, man. Christ. Fuck. Oh, dude. <laughs> yeah, that really happened. I'll never do that. Trust me. Don't ever. Anybody listening to this, if you're telling jokes around somebody and they got a translation book, don't try to tell them what you're joking about. It's not going to work <laughs> out. It's not gonna work out. I'm lucky the guy didn't go grab his right. Yeah, you are. Oh, right? oh my he's god, most, uh, bro. He's all vulnerable. You didn't even tell him, like you should have wrote down this is what we found funny. That yes, I thought that I was I thought that I wrote down other men in camp is doctor. He tell us funny story of man putting game. That's what we we're laughing about. That's what I thought. You didn't that write I that, put dude. <laughs> Who knows what that guy interpreted it as? Oh my gosh! <laughs> I would pay anything to know his version of that. Yeah, moment I would life. too, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, for all I know, he thinks I call guinea pig, and I want to just. I don't know. <laughs> Holy uh, shit, man! <laughs> oh my god! Holy fuck! <laughs> yeah, well, we started really... off with Sasquatch, and we ended up with guinea pig. <laughs> Yeah. God, oh so, my god, man. I'm telling you, some of the stories I got from guiding people from all over the world. I'm not going camping with you anymore. <laughs> what? Oh, you, don't like, dude. What, you don't like guinea pigs? <laughs> I'm not going to be your dude, then. <laughs> yeah. No, he coached me. Hey, man. Hey, if you ever went camp with somebody, you woke up with the gerbil hanging out. You tell anybody? Hell no. Want to go camping? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! Holy shit! Oh man, dude, this has been a riot, bro. <laughs> oh fuck. Anyway, yeah, it's probably better off to end on a. Well, we need some laughs now. I needed right? to laugh. I haven't had a good laugh like that in a while. I don't think oh, that, would... <laughs> that that story's never. <laughs> 
never got a different reaction from my version yeah. anyway holy <laughs> shit man dude i, I love doing podcasts with you man <laughs> oh fuck dude i get it i do we gotta we gotta get out there bro oh man oh right, well <laughs> and oh, the well, people well. in the audience right now is like fuck he wants to go out there for that story <laughs> Somebody's, watch, somebody's gonna comment i know that guy and he did guide me and he did put a guinea pig up don't let him fool you <laughs> oh shit well fuck man dude steve this has been awesome bro <laughs> well, <laughs> um, i'm gonna get to the hospital all right but i gotta tell you i needed that laugh bro because i've been like man. yeah no joke boffin's good yeah. it's good it's good food right it's good juju oh dude i needed it um Shit, bro. Uh, let's do another you one what? soon. Man. You know what? That's how my oh. channel went off. I was, I was started telling. I've always been told. Even no. that doctor told me. He goes, "You got the delivery." He goes, "When you got the delivery, you go to place. You got the delivery." Go, what do you mean? So you can tell a story. No, oh, whatever. And then I and all we always have story night in camp because everybody get me to tell my stupid stories in camp, right? And then I eventually I'm like, "Fuck, I'm gonna." I was trying to figure out how to get everybody to know about my hunting apps from sharing knowledge, and then I'm. I'm like, oh, I'm going to tell a hunt story. And I told, I started telling hunt stories on my channel. It's your first journal story. <laughs> yeah. Well, I haven't shared my first time yet, but I shared other people's. <laughs> but anyway, that's what oh, originally got the channel going was sharing my stupid stories, but they're all 100% factual, right? They're fucking awesome, man. Uh, anyway, <laughs> there you go. Well, shit, man. Let's, let's keep in touch, Steve, and, uh, Oh, yeah. Let's do this again pretty soon before the end of the world. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, well, I guess I better go and eat some dinner. I got to squeeze out, see if I can squeeze in another little podcast before bedtime tonight with another guy who ran into these damn things just up the road here like three or four days ago. Videotape they'll come too. It was pretty creepy. Shit. Really? Yeah, they're beating on well, trees. Let's do something right. on that later. Huh? Can I see the video on that? Yeah, I'll text it to you. Okay, cool. Oh. It's going to. We're gonna share it on the video too, but he had this guy's legit. This guy, he's been to the house, good friend, and uh, he's seen one of these things one time hunting, uh, probably about four hours east of Vancouver, is where he was. And he said he's sitting in his basin, and he felt like he just felt something was off, right? And he oh he heard some weird howls and screams in the night from camp camp by himself, and he's up in the basin above tree line, sitting there not seeing shit, not even hearing a bird. And all of a sudden, he looks down the bottom about 100 yards away, and here's this, he thought it was a grizzly bear, but the grizzly bear stood up and looked at him. <laughs> and he goes, dude, I had my scope on his face. He goes, that was no grizzly bear. I didn't give a shit what anybody says. And I go, it's okay, man. Seeing him say, you don't have to convince me. And uh, he said that that thing looked at him in the eyes through his scope. He goes, that thing looked into my freaking soul through my scope right back at me. And he said, it got up, started booking away from him. And was watching him the whole time. He goes, that guy was looking me in the eye through my scope. And he said, he also said it was, it was huge, nine nine ish feet tall. And he said that the look on his face was really, really weathered, like he was really weathered, old, and tired. This is how he explains. Like, I don't need this shit right now. Open it on my face, my buddy. <laughs> this one of those guys. I can't let him get near me. I'll probably put a guinea pig. I'm just trying head. to take a shit and head. look up, and then you're there. There's <laughs> <laughs> it, no privacy in the forest anymore. <laughs> Sasquatch deterrent. Just hold up a guinea pig and grin and wave. <laughs> All right, oh, we gotta we gotta go for dinner, man. All right, brother. Thank you, man. All right. Send some best wishes and prayers to your dad for sure. Thank you. Appreciate that. I'm yep. going to head over right now. Later, man.